Hi, welcome back. In this video we're going to look at forms of linear equations. We're going to start by looking at um, a number that characterizes the behavior uh, of the graph of a linear function, that is the behavior of a line. Um, and then we will use that to create a new form uh, for the equation of a line in a linear equation. Uh, recall that we had the standard form, which was ax plus by equals c. Um, that's not very useful um, if we're interested in talking about whether the line is, uh, say, increasing in slope or decreasing in slope. Um, it also, um, we also have to work a little bit to find the intercepts, so it's not a very useful form if we're looking for information about the line. So uh, let's let's look, take a look at this other idea, this number that characterizes um, how much a line is increasing or decreasing. So if we have a line, and we know it passes through two points, so we're going to call the first point x1, y1, and the second one x2, y2. Then we define this number called the slope, and it's given by the following. So it's y2 minus y1, so that is the difference in the y-coordinates, divided by x2 minus x1, that is the difference of the x-coordinates. We can think of this as the change in the y. We can write that as a delta y. Delta usually represent, used, used to represent the difference, uh, difference in the y's. Um, delta over delta x. Or if you like words, we've got the rise. So how much the function, how much the line changes in terms of the uh, vertical direction over the run, as in how far it changes uh, in the x direction. Okay, so given two points um, that are on a line, we can then find the slope. And that tells us some information. It tells us how fast the function is changing uh, with respect to the x unit. So if we go one unit over in x, the slope tells us how much we go up or down. If the slope is positive, like greater than zero, then the line will be increasing as in as we move from left to right uh, on the number uh, on the x-axis the function will increase if m is less than zero uh, l will be decreasing so if you've got a negative number for your slope the line will be decreasing all right um, we've got a bunch of a set of points here and we're going to find the slope of the line passing through these points using this formula. So change in y or change in x. Let's take a look at the first example. The first point we have here is 2, negative 1, so that's x of 2, y of negative 1. Second point is x of 5 and a y value of negative 3. So 2, negative 1, 5, negative 3. All right, to find the slope, we're going to take the change in the y's. So um, the first thing we need to do is choose which one is the first point and which one is the second point. Um, let's just go ahead and call this one the second one. So this will be x2, and this will be y2. And over here we'll have x1, and this will be y1. Right. So the slope is going to be y2, so negative 3, minus y1, negative 1. And since that's negative, I'm going to put it in parentheses. Divide by x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is 2. All right, so negative 3 minus negative 1, so y2 minus y1, over x2 minus x1. All right, and then we just simplify this. So negative 3 minus negative 1 is negative 3 plus 1, over 5 minus 2 is 3. And then negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, so negative 2 thirds. All right. So this particular slope is negative, first off, so we know that the line is decreasing. So if we were to plot this, the line would be decreasing. Um, another thing we can say is since it measures the rise over the run, we know that this graph is going to fall two units for every run of three units in the x direction. Or uh, it could rise two units for every move of negative three um, in the x direction. All right, um, let's take a look at the next one. So here we have a slope. We have two-thirds comma one-half and one comma four. 
get slope is going to be y2, so 4, minus y1, which is 1 half, divided by x2, which is 1, minus x1, which is 2 thirds. All right, so y, y2, y1, x2, x1. All right, now we've got fractions in here, and um, I don't like to deal with fractions ever. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both numerator and denominator by something that gets rid of all of the fractions. Um, and so we're going to multiply, we've got a denominator of a 2 and a denominator of 3, so I know the least common denominator would be 6. So I'm going to multiply by 6 over 6. All right, if we do that, we get 6 times 4, which is 24. 6 times 1 half is 3. 6 times 1 is 6, and 6 times uh, 2 thirds would be 4, because the 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. All right, now, we've got fractions over here. Here we just have difference of natural numbers. Much better. So uh, 24 minus 3 is 21, and then 6 minus 4 is 2. So 21 over 2. All right, so much steeper than this line. Um, it's also positive, so we know this line is increasing. All right. Let's look at these second two examples. Uh, if you'd like to pause the video, and you can go ahead and, and calculate these yourself. Uh, but let's go through here. So m equals, so y2 is 3 minus y1, also 3, divided by negative 2 minus 1. 3 minus 3 is 0, negative 2 minus 3 is negative 3, and 0 over any number is just 0. And notice that well, 0 is neither positive nor negative, and so this line has a slope of 0, and it's not increasing or decreasing. Uh, this, is, this would be a horizontal line. All right, in our last example, uh, we have slope is going to be 3 minus 5 over 2 minus 2. So we get negative 2 over 0. And we can't divide by 0, so this is undefined. When you have an undefined slope, um, what does that look like? What kind of line is that? Well, if we look at these two points, the x-coordinates are the same, but the y-coordinates are different. So this is going to create a vertical line, like this. So I'll put it over here, vertical. All right, so we can go ahead and add to our list here. So if the slope is positive, the line's increasing. If the slope is negative, the line's decreasing. If the slope is 0, L is a horizontal line. And if M is undefined, if we're dividing by 0, L is a vertical. So being able to calculate the slope is very important because the next thing we're going to look at is a form of a line that uses the slope. So stay tuned for that.